afternoon. My name is Bob Maltman. I'm the head coach with the University of Regina Cougar Women's Soccer Program. Uh, a little bit about my background. I've been with the team since 2007 and we compete in the Canada West Conference with the CIS, uh, Canadian Inter-University Sport. Um, I've been coaching now for approximately 26 years. Uh, I currently hold a Canadian uh, Soccer Association National B license and um, I'm also able to facilitate the delivery of some of the active start and the fundamental coaching courses through the CSA which uh, typically works for from four to six year olds and up to 12 years of age uh, for young or for coaches working with young boys and girls uh, from 12 down obviously. Um, I've played myself since I was about knee high to a grasshopper. Um, I've had a chance to work with provincial teams as well as the university program and also done as you know down to uh, four-year-olds as well so I feel I have uh, gained a lot of experience and um, a lot of enjoyment from working with children uh, all the way up to young adults that I currently work with now and it's a tremendous amount of fun. Well, I think the the first thing is 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 really gain a sense of uh, the age of the athlete that you're working with or the children that you're working with. Um, a four to six year old, realistically, I think we put far too much emphasis on trying to make the practices perfect or that we're going to win the next game, that type of thing. It should be about fun. The emphasis should be about can we get young children at that age, four to six, simply being able to move and change direction and run backwards and forwards and jump up and down and, and make the game enjoyable and make the, the event enjoyable. I think that where you know our role at that the youngest of ages up to even 12 years of age is to really give these children uh, a great sense of uh, enjoyment and uh, the fact that, that the game is is the teacher. It's not so much that you know everything about the sport of choice that you're working with, but I think what it is important is that you have a tremendous amount of passion, that you are very supportive, that you encourage the children, that you uh, try to catch them being good, that uh, you know if things are being done well, that you praise them at that point in time, that we've, we, I find at times we're too willing to um, you know get on top of kids that maybe aren't doing it right the first time or are maybe not winning the game. I mean, realistically, why did parents sign the children up in the first place? It wasn't necessarily to go and win a medal or win a championship. It was they wanted the children to be active. They wanted them to have an enjoyable experience. They wanted them to learn the, the joys and the skills of working with other kids and other children, uh, learning about themselves, trying to improve their athletic abilities in terms of just their body balance and their coordination, and at the same time pick up a few skills and, and and feel more confident about kicking a ball or throwing a ball or bouncing a ball or whatever it is exactly that they're doing. Um, and that would be my recommendation, is, is if you have fun with it and you don't take it too seriously, especially at the youngest ages, then you yourself are more relaxed, you're more comfortable with the process. And, and lastly, I would suggest that you really try to identify for yourself what is your philosophy and what is what are your own goals and that you communicate those to the families of the children you're working with and I think by doing that you uh, tend to minimize any sort of potential conflicts that you may run across between the yourself and the parents or the players because everybody's on the same page and aware of what the you know what the expectations are For myself, uh, the biggest thing is engagement. I think that um, any coach that I have seen uh, or any time that I've felt that I had a, uh, an enjoyable session were that my children or the, the, the youth that I was working with were very engaged in the process. So that might be something as simple as is the, the layout of my practice or my session does it enable everyone to get involved as, as close to the full amount of people as possible? Do I have sufficient equipment? So that it might mean that I, I realize at times as community coaches in soccer, for example, that you may have a limitation of balls. So I've also seen though where a coach had minimal balls and yet had players standing like ducks in a row, one behind each other with one ball in play. And they maybe had still three or four other balls going, you know, waiting to be used. So if we can take advantage of maximizing the use of the equipment that we have. So if we only have three balls and we have 12 players, can we have one ball for a group of four people instead of having 12 players fighting for one ball, for example? Um, 
the layout of the practice? You know, is it something that uh, it's it's easy for me to me observe all of my my athletes doing the the the, the exercise or the the small sided game etc that I'm I'm hoping that they will be successful with so that I I, p I pick a position where I can see everyone being involved I'm not turning my back as much as possible to maybe players behind me so that that they either don't hear what I'm trying to ask them to do or that the child may perceive that that coach the coach doesn't like me as much as he does Jeannie or Joey because he's not paying or she's not paying attention to me um, can we use a lot of small sided activities so that rather than having a large game for example you may have 12 players on your team I would rather see you at a four to six year old age can we have it where it's as much as possible where everybody's involved in the process it might be a fun silly little game like bridge defender or star wars where the players have to run across from one end of the grid to the other and you're darth vader or you you use your imagination and that's the joy of working with that age you can be a kid yourself again rather than so having a, a 6v6 game can we make it into 2v2s or 3v3s so that again there's more frequent touches of the ball by every athlete there's the opportunity for them to experience uh, the challenges in a smaller number of players so there's less permutations that they have to think about so again their confidence rises because their success rates rise uh, you can bring out things in a smaller process um, more games rather than standing around in, in straight lines kids come to be active they don't want to stand still still they want to they came and chose a game related activity a team related sport because they wanted to play with their friends they wanted to be movement or to have movement and to be agile etc so if we can create an environment where there's a lot of requirement for that player to to try things out and to use their creativity and use their imagination and inspire them to do that rather than having them stand five yards apart and and pass a football or a soccer ball or a basketball back and forth for 10 minutes of course which would you rather do you know I know what let I them just have fun throw a ball out say here's some basic guidelines go play and then can we instead of tell them all the time what to do can we start to guide the process can we ask them how did that work what could we do differently how, how do we make it more you know what was the problem that you saw and can you find your own solutions can we create little challenges that but but yet are more internally driven rather than externally driven what i mean by that is that you know if we're for example in soccer teaching kids how many times can we keep juggle a ball well we can make it where we recognize who the best player is all the time so that again Janie or joey never feel good about their process or we can say can you get one more than you got the last time can you get two more than you got the last time because those type of uh, methods are more internally driven now I, I as an athlete are more in control of my own actions and I'm less uh, concerned about whether I'm the best or not right now that will come in time but right now if I can improve by one or two or three or four if I can continue that every time I touch that ball or make that layup I know that I'm getting better. I can see I'm getting better, and therefore my confidence will grow. And my my the reason why I was getting involved in the sport in the first time for the enjoyment and the satisfaction will naturally grow. And my belief is that that will keep those children involved in sport on more of a long-term basis. It will be a positive experience for them. That uh, and, and we obviously have to encourage the parents to recognize that with that methodology there will be mistakes made and because part of learning is to make mistakes and you learn from those mistakes and you hope you minimize the same occurrence but all of those things together to me are very very significant when I'm looking at how well is a, is an, or is a coach running a session.